You are listening to a MetalExpressRadio.com interview. Enjoy. Hey, this is Mick Burgess. I'm joined backstage at the Think Tank in Newcastle by Tim Rip Rowans. How are you doing, Tim? I'm good. How are you? Doing very well. It's quite uh, quite loud in here with the uh, opening band playing. How, how, how's the two gone so far? It's been good. You know, I mean, a few prom- uh, some great promoters and some crappy promoters who <laughs> still don't know how to promote shows. They just yeah. think you know that they can book a show and no- and people will come. But I'll tell you, it's the fans here are great. A lot of familiar faces and a lot of great places. Mm. I think the last time we saw you up in Newcastle was when you were with. Um, Iced Earth, uh, opening for Heaven and Hell um, at the Newcastle Arena. That must have been a great show on, on Ronnie James Dio's last tour. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, I'm, I was friends with Ronnie, and and to do to be able to tour with them was uh, you know, I was able to do two tours out supporting them for a little bit. But that was you know special touring around here and, and playing here. And you know, Ronnie was fantastic. He was a great guy. Yeah. Actually, the last time you were here was with Dio's Disciples when you played with the Rods. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. We did a, we, one of the first tours we did with Dio Disciples, and and uh, Rods are great guys and, yeah, and rock yeah. and everything. So yeah, that was fun. Because Dave Finstein's Ronnie's cousin. Yes. Yeah. Rock. Yeah. yeah he's great. They're good yeah. guy. <laughs> I mean, are, are you still touring with Dio's Disciples at the moment? Are you still on with that? I do. I do tour with them. You know, whenever I can, I tour a lot of solo and a lot of a lot of stuff. So I'm busy. So I miss a lot of their, their shows and tours just because I'm already booked up. Yeah, yeah. So they get somebody like Joe Retter or somebody who'll come in and, and yeah, check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of, lot of good singers they get. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe's a great singer as yeah. well with them. Um, he was here with Heaven and Earth a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Joe's great. Mm. I mean, so back onto your, your current too, you know, you've, you've been involved in a lot of bands over the years. Obviously Judas Priest, Iced Earth, Yingwee, Beyond Fear. Um, Child Wars of the Damned. Um, what sort of set have you got tonight? Are you got concentrating on one part of your career or are you mixing it around yeah, a bit? Yeah, you know, this is the first time I've, I've toured in a long time by just, just doing some Judas Priest. Yeah. You know, a lot of uh, the stuff from my era, Priest. A lot of Jugulator, a lot of Demolition. We throw in a few cool classics, you know, that I haven't played on tours. But this is the first time I'm really trying to... Mostly when I tour, I, I do Jugulator Demolition, but I also do Beyond Fear and my solo record, yeah. you know, so, but this is the first time I'm not doing any of that. Yeah. So who, who have you got with you in your band? Well, I got the guys in, in a band called Sandstone. They're from Ireland. Yeah. And, oh, I, yeah, yeah. and I've used them quite a bit, you know. I mean, they, uh, they've, uh, they opened for me years ago, and this is, uh, and I loved them. And uh, so this is about the fourth tour they've, they've been my band. Yeah. So when I come to Europe, that's pretty much the band that's going to do it. Do you hope to sort of record together at some point? I would love to, yeah. You know, I mean, it would be ideal. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll just see how it works out. Because you, you're about to release a new EP with uh, Marzi Matsuri. Is that is that a, a new band, or has he brought you in to sing on the um, EP? Oh, it's a project. We actually wrote the songs and recorded them originally for a, a zombie movie. Hair, uh, I think it was Hair Metal. Zombie Massacre, Shotgun, <laughs> Hill Manor Shotgun Zombie Massacre, something. And uh, and it was in that, so Marzi decided to, to put them out and remix them and put them on a scene. It's, it's great. I would love to tour with Marzi and I'd love to do more. I love it. Yeah, so do you have any, any other songs written or is it just those six? We just had those, and really there's four that I sing on. The other two are kind of instrumental intros and outros. Um, but that's all we did. Yeah. So does that leave your sort of priority with, you know, Chard Walls of the Damned at the moment? Well, it does. I mean, we just released that new record in September. and yeah. But I'm, I'm in the middle of writing right now with Chris Caffrey from Sabotage and trans Orchestra. And All right. Roy Z's producing it and writing with us. And uh, so that's kind of, I'm doing that. And I'm also doing some recording with a band called Killing Machine that David Elvison's part of. So we're kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I got a lot going on. Yeah. I mean, t- tell me more about the one with Chris Caffrey. Because I was, because you actually toured with Sabotage, didn't you? Uh, I think maybe the last time you, you toured with Priest. Yeah, they, they went on the road with us, and uh, you know, um, Chris and I have been friends for years, and he, and he wrote a song with me on my solo CD, and we've always wanted to write together and do something, and he gave me a shout, and we signed a deal with Frontiers, and uh, you know, it's going to be like a cross between Sabotage, Judas Priest kind of stuff, you know? You get some good... Um you get some good promo with Frontiers as well, a good, good proactive label. Yeah, yeah. It'd be, yeah. Oh, no, it's a fantastic label, so we're yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. I mean, if that's not enough, you're also doing stuff with um, um, Rudy Sarzo and James Kotak as well. Well, and, and yeah, and Kerry, Kerry Kelly. Yeah. Kerry Kelly's the main one in the band that spearheaded it called Project Rock. 
And we wrote a record, and uh, it's finished and ready to go. We were going to release it, but at the last minute, we were going to change the name, and, and uh, James didn't want to change it, so we pulled the record late deal off the shelf. And uh, but it's a, it's really good. It's straightforward rock, you know, and. Uh, I really like it a lot, actually. So. so when can we hope to see that? I don't know. You know, it's ready. It's sitting yeah. there, ready to go. You know, it must but. be quite frustrating when you've spent all that time working on a record. Well, especially for Carrie and myself, because mm. we're the ones who who did all the work. Especially Carrie. I mean, he really worked his tail off. But him and I went back and forth with the songs forever. And I flew out there and met with him, and we did some stuff. So we did a lot, mm. lot, you know, a lot of it. So it's a shame that it that yeah. it's sitting there. Mm. Because you did the um, the Trinity tour with um, Jeff Tate and Blaze Bailey fairly recently. Um, I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun, not just for for you, but for a lot of fun for the fans as well. It was a lot of fun, you know. Um, it was a lot of fun. I, we laughed a lot and had a good time. Unfortunately, I won't be working with Jeff Tate again, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right, all right, but apart from that, the tour is all right. <laughs> but I will be working with Blaze Bailey. Yeah. So, I mean, on a, on a tour like that, did you just have the same, do you all have the same band and you sort of come yeah. and do a couple it of was, songs? Yeah, you know what, it was, a, we had an absolute blast doing it. Uh, we laughed, we'd go up and sing the song we recorded together. And then we, you know, Jeff would sing three, I would, Blaze would sing three, I would sing three. Jeff would sing three, Blaze would sing three, I would sing a few, and then all of us would come out and I'd play guitar and sing. We do Living After Midnight. It was a it was a really fun yeah. tour. Yeah. Was that just a tour in America or did you bring it anywhere yeah. else? Well we planned on taking it everywhere, but you know it didn't short lived. Yeah. 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 At least they still might, but just not with me, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, you're playing you're playing the Judas Priest set on on the show on this tour, um, and obviously, you know, that's where people first came across the Tim River Owens. I mean, it's, it is an incredible story. I mean, when when did you first realize that Judas Priest were looking at you as the replacement for Rob Halford? Well, I just got a call, you know, out of the blue. The, you know, some girls gave him a video, and Scott had met me before, Travis, and just out of the blue, they just called and said, hey, we're interested, and... Did, did you thought, think it was one of your mates playing a prank at first? Well, they said, you got to call Judas Priest, and they gave me a, the name of the lady, and uh, I looked up the record, and that, I, you know, uh, the yeah. painkiller record, and there was her name on it, so I'm like, yeah, it's true. You know, so. Nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah, so I flew out there and days later and sang the song and made the band that day. You know, so. Yeah, yeah, so, so what were the songs you sang at the, um, the first time you played? Victim of Changes. Right. Victim of Changes, yeah. So the, 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 they didn't give you an easy ride. Well, it was easy to me. Yeah. So yeah. that was at that time. I wasn't. I didn't sing a Judas Priest song for over a year. Okay. Uh, I was in a Seattle tribute band, and and uh, so I wasn't even prepared to sing. I didn't even know I was going to have to sing. And yeah. they just said, "Sing." I think they tried to stump me by singing that. And yeah. They picked the the best song that I could sing. That's good. So, so how long did it take for you to find out you got the job? Right, found out right then and there. Just, uh, just like that. Yeah, but I wasn't allowed to say anything yeah. for months. We, I think that was February of '96, and we didn't release it till like July of '96 or something. So. Yeah. So how long did you sort of take after that initial meeting? Was all meet back up again and start working on material and. I think I started flying back right away. I think yeah. I came came back and then started going back and slowly working on on some songs and. Um, we recorded uh, uh, Burning Hell and, and Death Row in a, a different studio than the others. We recorded a lot of that in a very more Barlow studio from uh, Jethro Tull. And then, uh, yeah, so I just started going back and forth. And uh, So what, up to that point, what was the biggest show of your career before you played your first show with Priest? No, I don't know. A couple thousand, maybe. Uh, was it quite, quite hair-raising for you that, that no. first moment? No, wasn't at all. Yeah. Well, the first, well, I remember my first show with him wasn't a, uh, it was a big crowd. But remember, this was when heavy metal was not a, was it big? It was 97, 97 yeah, yeah, yeah. so it was, but still it was probably a few thousand people. But I was ready, you know? Yeah. And uh, I, I felt comfortable. I mean, is, is, the, is the new boy in the band, did you have much input in the, in the sort of choosing the songs? Because you could give a slightly different perspective on the music to the You know, a little bit, not a whole lot, but yeah. you know, they did. You know what, the thing was great, Priest, was I always felt comfortable. I'm still friends with them, and I yeah. always felt uh, 
really comfortable. We were, we were just like a family and, and friends, and uh, I never felt like an outsider from day one, yeah. so I always felt comfortable doing whatever I wanted to do. So how was it working in the studio with KK and Glenn Tipton on, you know, on the Jubilate and Demonstration? It was uh, tough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the hard tough Glenn, when, you know, this was pre... Uh, Auto tune and moving yeah. stuff around. And Glenn, I would, you know, he's never worked with me before, so we we took a long time, you know, trying to get it right and going over and over it again, and you know. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you um, co-wrote what's my name on the import version of Demolition. Um, do you wish you'd had more sort of input on the? Well, I did, the and that's why I wrote Scream Machine on Beyond Fear. I mean, Scream Machine was the last song written. To, to point out that I sh and if anybody's never heard Scream Machine, go get Beyond Fear and listen to the song Scream Machine. It's written for the point of I can write, I could have written, but you know, I, I understood it though. Listen, I understood it, man. It's Judas Priest. They did it. They they know what they're doing. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the two albums. You know, some fans loved them. Some fans thought it was too modern. But Judas Priest never made the same album they twice. Didn't. They did Point of Envy. They did. Well, um, listen, British. Here's the thing about British Steel. There was nothing like British Steel before that. Yeah, that's right. British yeah. Steel had two high notes on the whole record. It was a, a straight, straight kind of record, right? So, uh, Point of Entry, like you said, was totally different. Every Turbo record, well, yeah. Turbo, wasn't liked by a lot of people. Ram It Down was a drum machine and wasn't mm. liked by some people. I mean, you go back now and the point of entry is actually one of my favorite records. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the people just, you know, they just change all the time and mm. uh, Jugulator was, was, you know, uh, the natural progression of painkiller with music. But know? it was right for that time because there was a lot of the really heavy stuff kicking around at that time. I agree, well. and when I go listen to it now, it's yeah. it's not even that heavy, you know. You know, you know one on one, um, feed on me. Yeah, like, it's, it's classic. It's classic metal. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I said that, you know, you sang in um, Dio's Disciples, I was just listening back to Feed on Me, and there's a real Dio-esque sound to that yeah. vocal on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So. If you'd done the third album, what sort of direction do you think the band would have taken on that? Well, you know, my my, which I still hope they take this direction. I've yeah. always said it. I think they should. And me, I would have liked to have done the heavier, little more up-to-date version of British Steel style, just yes. straightforward crunch, um, catchy choruses, sing-alongs. I think it would be something nice like that. And I still think they should do. Yeah. Something like that, but you know what? I mean, that's the great, the beauty of Judas Priest. That's why I said, if you think, if you hated Jugulator, and really hated Jugulator Demolition because of the direction, then to me, it's not a true Judas Priest fan. Because yeah, yeah. true Judas Priest, listen, we all did. I didn't care for Turbo. I didn't care for Ram It Down. I did. I like Turbo better than Ram It Down, but I still like. I still liked it because I was a Judas Priest fan. Yeah. I like that they change, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's probably why they've lasted so long, though. Because I think if you, there's not many bands can get away with doing this. You know, ACDC can get away with it. Yeah. Status Quo can get away with it. But everybody else, you know, you know you've got to adapt. Maiden sticks to their standard yeah. kind of stuff, you know. And it, it, that's what you, you love it for, you know? You know, you mentioned about um, Judas Beast being like a, a family. You know, you, you've been about 15 years since you, you left the band and Rob's back. But in all those 15 years, I've never heard one bad mention about you. I've never heard you bad mouth anybody in the yeah. band. It just seems like, like you said, it was like a, a, a big family. There's a really good feeling about it. Well, I mean, I, I, I have them to thank for bringing me in and doing what I do now, you know. So, uh, uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, that I had a, the time of my life with them, you know. And, and, and the big part of having it was how I was treated and how we got along and yeah. you know so that was a big part of it and it also you know it opened a lot of doors for you as well so well, you know you got a 20 year 15 20 year it opened happens. all the doors yeah, yeah. For, you yeah. Know? I mean uh, and you know and I'm friends with Rob and that's the other thing that people you know we're friends and and uh, you know if we see each other we we always you know see what's going on and talk and he's a he's a fantastic guy yeah. so that's that's the other thing I'm not only friends with, with those guys but I'm friends with Rob and everybody did you still go 
don't see them when they come through town? Well, I'm always gone. I've, I haven't seen them in, in years. I think the last time I saw Salt might have been Rob doing a solo show in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in uh, Buenos Aires or, or Sao Paulo or somewhere. Well, Buenos Aires, I think. That would be a nice thought, though, if you, on your next solo record, if you got Rob to come and sing a duet with you. Well, I think it would be awesome, yeah. yeah. I mean, so looking, you know, looking to the future rather than rather than back. You know, you've, you've got quite a few things on the go um, that we've talked about a little bit earlier. Um, is there anything else here, sort of any any other projects you've got lined up? Well, no. I mean, you know, one thing is, if anybody ever needs to figure out what's going on, I mean, they can just go to my Facebook pages yeah. or my Instagram or Twitter. Easy to find. You can just Google it. But yeah, I'm just I'm just recording and putting stuff out and touring. Have you, have you still got your restaurant business as well? No, we sold it because I'm just too busy. And, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, know. I can't imagine how much time to Yeah, my partner got too busy too, so we just didn't have time to, yeah. to be in a business that doesn't make any money. Yeah. <laughs> it's more fun being in music as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, with UK shows finishing in a couple of days, so where, where'd you head next? Are you over to Europe? Well, I've been busy for about the last two and a half months. I've been gone nonstop, so I'm going to go home and, yeah. uh, for a couple of weeks and record. i got to record. You know, I spent some time with my kids and and uh, with my girlfriend and kind of just uh, relax. Have a bit of a rest. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank really you. Really looking forward to the show tonight. Thank you. Hope you enjoy your time in the All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man.